Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Now, I am joined right now by a whole lot of noise by our next door neighbors and the animals that we are going to be meeting today are lorikeets. So hopefully you can hear me through my mask this morning, but there is a whole lot of action going on today here at Riverbanks. But before I go any further, I have to say good morning, mom and dad. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Friday, nice to see ya. Today we are going live with our lorikeets. Woo! And we got a lot of noisy friends, which is amazing. There's a lot of commotion going on at Riverbanks right now. But good morning, Cindy, Pam. Happy Friday. Nice to see all of you. Faith and Ella. Oh, all these familiar faces. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stacy. hi. Nice to see you too. Today, we're going to be joined by Amy, one of our bird keepers, inside of our lorikeet aviary for a very special morning nectar breakfast. Oh, I, I, I thought they were going to be done hooping and hollering. Those voices that you're hearing from right next door, those are our Siamangs calling. It is my absolute favorite animal call ever. So hopefully you have your volume up because the volume is up here at Riverbanks this morning. Oh, Sarah, Mimi, I'm glad that y'all can hear me. Good morning, Maxim, Kristen too. Hi, 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 good morning. Now I have to, before I head on into Lorikeet, I have to give a big shout out. You might notice I have a new mask on this morning. It was actually sent to me here at Riverbanks as a very special gift. It came from Reese Gray and their mother from Spartanburg, South Carolina. So I have to give a big shout out to Reese Gray and mom for making this beautiful mask. Look at this underwater pattern. I absolutely love it. Y'all are too sweet. It has been so great to see all the support for Riverbanks during our temporary closure, but some of you might already know that today is our first day of reopening. It's only for members though, but we opened at 9 a.m. for our member only reopening special. But tomorrow is gonna be our first official day of reopening. Of course, still practicing social distancing. But good morning, Emma, Grace, and Ethan. Nice to see all of you and Ben and Noah all the way from Colorado. Hopefully y'all can hear all the commotion this morning. I am so excited. Y'all are excited to see the lorikeets. We have had a whole lot of action and it is super noisy, like you said, Megan. Now, hopefully here in a little bit, once we start to feed our lorikeets, it's gonna quiet down a little bit. They're gonna start to focus on all that exciting nectar. But you know, I welcome all the commotion. It is too much fun here at Riverbanks this Friday morning. So let's go ahead head on into our lorikeet aviary. And here in a second, I'll go ahead and turn around our camera and say good morning to Amy. Whoo, it's getting loud, they're so excited. Here, let me go ahead and turn around the camera. Good morning, Amy. Now, Amy, I know you have a whole lot to share with us, but today we got a whole lot of noise going on. We got masks going on, it's gonna be muffled. So let's actually take a look. What are we feeding them this morning? Let's take a closer look. We got a nice breakfast here this morning. So this is their fruit and pellet chow mix. Um, so they have some grapes, blueberries, chopped up apples, papaya, some shredded lettuce, but then also two different types of pellets, which are some soft shell pellets and some small parrot pellets. And so, there's some orange chunks for some enrichment. I was gonna say, there's a whole lot of different types of food. We got grapes, fruits, all the pellets too. So it's quite the different medley, but I also see this kind of jug behind you. It almost looks like it's filled with like milk, kind of cloudy milk. It doesn't look like juice at all. Tell us what's inside of there. This is actually their nectar powder. So we get their powder, their nectar in a powder form and we sure. just add water and then we get it out, give it out to them. It's the same thing that our guests give the lorikeet in, in the aviary. Gotcha. So all of you who've been wondering, are the lorikeets getting fed? Do they miss the visitors? Don't worry, they're still getting all of that yummy, delicious nectar. And of course, all their other amazing food. And I'm guessing that's what all the trays are here for this morning. Perfect. So here in a second, we're gonna actually head inside the aviary. We're gonna follow Amy. She's gonna pour out all the nectar. The entire jug? The entire jug. So all of this nectar, it's a big container, y'all. 
they are going to drink and eat pretty much all of this. There's about 45 different lorikeets, and they sound really hungry, Amy. <laughs> They are so ready. So let me take a step back. I'll let you gather up everything you need. And we're going to go ahead and feed those lorikeets. <laughs> All right, we'll make sure we don't have anybody joining us here on this side. Look at them. They are immediately on top of Amy. They know exactly where to go. Now, some of you who've been watching Z Learning from the very beginning, you know that we have featured Z learning before with our lorikeets. So today is an extra special feature as well to see all of our feathered friends this morning. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check out, see what Amy's up to though. She is dumping out all of that <laughs> nectar. They are so hungry. They have been unpatiently waiting this morning. So Amy is pouring out all that nectar and check out those lorikeets. They're diving right on in. They are using that kind of brush-like tongue. Oh, they're wondering what's going on with this microphone. There's a new weird guy inside their aviary. Oh, there you go, now you can see. Check out them as they kind of flick that tongue in and out. They're collecting up all that nectar. They're drinking it it's so high in nutrients for them. And that is a part of their natural diet. Out in the wild, they would feed on nectar as well. Y'all keep sending in all those great questions. It is so great to see all of you. We're gonna let Amy continue on sending out all the rest of that food. I'm gonna make sure to watch my step. I don't wanna get too close to any of the lorikeets because they are oh so focused right now. But also as Amy is feeding out everything, I have to show you all of our friends, our members in the background. It's so great to see all of you this morning. Folks are tuning in right on the other side of the mesh, joining in live here at Riverbank. We are so excited to begin reopening and welcoming you all back here at Riverbanks. But Amy, they are all about this this morning. There is they so are, much action yeah. going on. So we had mentioned really briefly that there are about 45 different 45, lorikeets. Yes. So we have a lot of different characters in here. And one of the questions I've been noticing coming in is how long do they live for? Can you tell us a little bit more about the ages of our flock? Yeah, so the age of our flock right now is we have some that are only going to turn one in a couple months. Wow. And our oldest one is about 18 years old. Wow, so we have a range all the way from about one years old or almost one, mm -hmm. and then all the way up to 18, did 18, you say? Yes. Amazing. Now, another question that Anna had actually just sent in is do they all have names, all 45 of them? Amy, that'd be a whole lot of names to keep track of. It would be a whole lot of names, and I can say they not all of them have names, but some of them do. We do name some just some different characteristics of their plumage, sure. but some for their different personalities as well. So I would almost say it's more like some of them have nicknames maybe, yes, definitely. but if you look really close, it's kind of hard to see while they're drinking. Do you see the jewelry that they have on? It's actually right here. I don't want to get bit though. <laughs> Somebody was way too interested in their breakfast this morning. But if you see those really shiny bracelets that they're wearing, they each have numbers on them. And it's almost like their identification band, yes, would it not be? Exactly. So even though some of them might not have a nickname, they all have a number, which then coincides with their individual needs. Yes. Ooh, somebody did not <laughs> want to share their nectar this morning. <laughs> so right now we are looking at Okay, I'm gonna test myself, Amy. Mm -hmm. These are rainbow lorikeets, correct? They're actually the coconut lorikeets. No! <laughs> Y'all, I had a 50-50. It has been so long since I've hung out with the lorikeets. These are the rainbow lorikeets. So then, where are one of our coconut lorikeets? These are the coconuts right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we are looking at coconut? Yes, coconut lorikeets. Jeez oh, Louise. You know, I just need to hand the camera to Amy. She's gonna do it on her own this morning. So we have two different varieties of lorikeets in yes. here. Where's our other variety? They're not actually oh. hanging out with us. Perfect, let's go ahead and take a look at those rainbows. Now they all kind of share space here at the zoo. You notice that they're quite a bit different in color, which is completely my bad. You know, I should be able to tell these differences much better. But you also might notice some of our individuals look like they have a little less feathers or maybe have some fuzzier looking feathers on them as well. Amy, what's kind of the difference between those different plumages, I guess? So for the rainbow lorikeets, they have the brighter blue heads and the very vibrant red and orange chest feathers compared to the coconuts that have the darker blue heads and then the red and black striped chest feathers. 
But also, some of our birds are going through their spring and summer molt currently. Oh. So they are losing and regrowing some feathers. And then for some of our birds, they're just a little too well loved by their significant gotcha. others. Gotcha. So the way parrots uh, form their bonds and keep their bonds strong is by preening each other. And sometimes some of them get a little too happy and excited and over preen their friends, which makes them lose some of their feathers. Look at it's almost like this interaction that we're seeing right now between yes. these two. Look yes. at how sweet that is. Leslie, I completely agree with you. So we do have quite the range in colors and ages, of course. Now we're trying to go really slow because look at all these individuals that are hanging out on the ground here this morning. <laughs> now, this is not necessarily typical to see them all on the ground like this, but right now, even though we are open to our members and we'll reopen fully to the general public this weekend, our lorikeet aviary is going to actually remain closed. Now I want to explain that really quick because it might be kind of bizarre, but imagine this way. We are trying our best and doing a very good job of it to encourage social distancing. And in an area like this, it's a little bit challenging when there are a whole lot of birds and everyone's wanting to congregate into one space. So for phase one, we're gonna remain closed on lorikeets, but as you can tell by all of our members on the other side of that mesh right over there, you can all still see the lorikeets. Don't worry, you're not missing out on all of the colorful action here. All right, Amy, let's go get a closer look over here at some of these individuals that are eating this kind of medley of different things. Let's see, we'll try not to scare them away too much. So right now we have about 45 different lorikeets. It looks like they're nibbling on some of their favorites. What would you say are their favorite foods? Their favorite foods outside of the nectar are definitely going to be grapes and blueberries. You can see all the grapes are already gone and the blueberries <laughs> are very close to being finished as well. I didn't even notice that, you are so right. There were a few grapes in here. They've been devoured. Look at how dirty somebody's beak is. <laughs> they are definitely have some preferences, of course. Now that is quite a medley, but just like all of you at home, of course, you're gonna have a preference on your favorite foods. And so do the lorikeets here at Riverbanks. Oh, look at these characters coming in. I have somebody who's parking on my back right now too. <laughs> here, let's go ahead and turn around the camera so that you all can see. I was gonna say, I have a friend right over <laughs> hanging out over here. It is too much fun. So much going on here at Riverbanks today. Now, all of you who are tuning in, like I said, we've, oh, we featured lorikeets in the past, but there is still so much to talk about. In fact, Amy, where would you typically find lorikeets like these out in the wild? Lorikeets are typically going to be found in Australia and then some of the lower um, island chains in the Southern Asia. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Okay. so. Since they live here at the zoo, right next to our koalas, for example, and our Komodo dragons, that would be almost a similar sort of range that they would have out in the wild. Yes. So kind of those Australia and then those Southeast Asian mm -hmm. islands as well. Now keep all those great questions coming in everybody. So Miriam, hopefully you caught that answer. Some of their favorite things to eat are gonna be those grapes and blueberries, but hands down, Amy says their favorite is still all of that nectar. Let me watch our step over here. We're going to scooch on over here and get a closer look at everybody enjoying the nectar this morning. It's been actually pretty well enjoyed. They don't have a whole lot left right now this morning. It was very funny to see. Now, the rest of the flock just kind of looks like they're hanging out all in this different area. And they are all free flighted here in our lorikeet aviary. Now, like I said, even during our kind of reopening phases, Y'all can still see our lorikeets and kind of get a closer look at them, of course. Um, but David asked a great question about how much does a lorikeet weigh? So some of our lorikeets weigh about a little bit between 120 to 150 grams, which sure. is a good weight. Um, but our, I guess our heaviest one is a lorikeet that was featured last time, which is sure. about, his name was Pikachu, if you don't yes, remember him. Yes, I remember, yep, yep. The last time he was weighed, he weighed about 185 grams. So Whoa. he is our heaviest lorikeet for sure. <laughs> so all of you at home, I want you to convert grams, about that 180 grams, back to ounces, maybe something that's more familiar to you, or even what percentage of a pound that they would weigh. It's a kind of a challenging conversion, but I believe in all of you. But here at the zoo, we always do our different measurements in the metric system. So that way we're using all of those different grams, kilos, kilograms as well. 
That way we can keep track of all those animal weights. But Amy, of course they are very lightweight, so that way they can fly. Exactly. <laughs> now Sarah, age 13, was wondering, do the lorikeets get any checkups? Let's go ahead and scooch on over here to these individuals that are drinking some of their nectar over here in the sunshine. So do they receive regular checkups just like our other animals? We do, of course. All of our birds get regular checkups by our vets. And then, of course, if we ever have a bird that we have any concerns about in the slightest, we immediately will get them and take them to go see our vets to make sure that they're in tip-top health. Absolutely. Well, and Amy is a great example of a keeper that has a very specialized area. The keepers that take care of our lorikeets don't take care of the sea lions and the tortoises. They have a very <laughs> focused area in birds, which means that they can keep track of all of those different needs of those individuals. So minute changes in behavior, or their physical characteristics, y'all know when to call the vets, exactly. you are on top of it. <laughs> well, it looks like when we came on over here, they decided to leave this nectar area. So let's go ahead and scooch on back. Let's see where the rest of all the action is. It kind of looks like everyone spread out quite a bit. Yes. Now, all of you who are tuning in that joined us right away when we started this morning, it was pretty noisy. <laughs> they seem to have calmed down a little bit. Let's go ahead and head on over this way. Now. Amy, this is a part of a normal routine, and we've been doing this even during our temporary closure. Y'all have been obviously feeding, interacting with them, mm -hmm. and still giving them all the same things that they would have on a typical open day. Is that yes, correct? of course. So have you noticed any changes in behavior? Have they been missing the public or anything like that? They most likely definitely have. So as much as we can, we're spending time in here giving them nectar, hanging out, interacting with them but it is obvious that they do miss the kind of constant stream of people coming through and interacting with them as well. So those of you who are wondering, do the lorikeets miss our guests? They definitely have noticed a difference. In fact, you could almost look at when guests come into the lorikeet aviary here, it's almost like you all are walking in Richmond. We've been getting flown on, landed on. They like to check us out, say good morning, of course. But right now it kind of looks like everyone's spread out a bit <laughs> and everyone's kind of quieting down let's go ahead and check on some of our other sort of areas others are heading on up to our nesting boxes and we still got some friends on over here that are hanging out over by some more of our nectar now it doesn't look like they're going to be so eager to eat they're hanging out next to their their poster right behind them <laughs> y'all have been sending in such great questions we'll try our best to answer as many of them as we can but Christine, age six, asked a great question about how much do they eat per day? So that's kind of difficult to say. Um, sure. The amount of nectar I brought in this morning was about two liters worth. Two liters two of, liters so that worth. big huge jug that you saw was about two liters. And they'll drain that over the course of the next hour or so. And then about two more hours, we'll bring them fresh nectar. And then they get about eight pans of their chow at night gotcha. and then two during the day. So since they are one big social group, everyone's kind of fed in, uh, let's say, family-style eating, <laughs> where it's big <laughs> dishes for everyone to share. And our keepers monitor that really closely to make sure that everyone is getting their fair share of everything. Now, I want to give a big thank you as we start to let our lorikeets continue on with what they are eating and enjoying the rest of their day. I want to give a big thank you, of course, to Amy. Thanks so much, Amy, for joining us. We're going to let Amy kind of continue to do a checkup on all of the lorikeets this morning, but we're gonna go ahead and sign off. Thanks so much again, Amy, for joining us. Now, this morning we were live here at our lorikeet aviary with all of the different lorikeets getting their breakfast routine and it's really started to quiet down a whole lot here at Riverbank. So I figured I would jump on, say a big thank you to everybody who tuned in live this morning. I am so glad you love our colorful lorikeets, our coconut lorikeets and our rainbow lorikeets as much as Amy and I do here at Riverbanks. Now I wanna give a quick reminder to everybody that Riverbanks is officially reopening tomorrow morning to the general public. So head to riverbanks.org. I know we've been having some technical difficulties. Y'all have been so excited to get those timed tickets that we've crashed our website a couple of different times, but be patient and be excited because we are so ready to welcome you all back here to Riverbanks. Another quick reminder, since it is Friday, we're actually going to take Monday off for a Z learning break and we will join you again live on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And we'll have some teaser posts out to see who we might be meeting on Tuesday morning. Because all of you who are concerned that Riverbanks is reopening, is Z learning gonna go away? Have no fear, Z learning is here to stay. 
and we'll keep you updated on what that schedule looks like and how it's changing as we go through our reopening phases. We are so excited to welcome you all back. We are ready. So head to riverbanks.org for all the details on how we are making a safe and fun environment for all of you to enjoy here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Thank you so much, everybody, and happy Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy and be safe, and we'll see you on Tuesday morning, everybody.